Hello dear students, in this session we will learn about Gauss law. What is Gauss law? Gauss law is defined to calculate electric flux. So, I'll, let me write the definition of Gauss law. The total electric flux, the total electric flux through a closed surface in vacuum, through a closed surface in vacuum is 1 by epsilon naught times the charge enclosed by the surface is 1 by epsilon naught times the charge enclosed 1 by epsilon naught times the net charge enclosed by the surface net charge enclosed by the surface. Most of the times uh, you might have observed I am not writing the definition while teaching, but this definition is very important we have to be little careful about the words total electric flux through a closed surface flux is defined through a surface like force is between two objects electric field is defined at a point flux is defined through a surface in vacuum that is why epsilon naught comes is 1 by epsilon naught times the total charge enclosed by the surface. Let me explain say there is a closed surface there is a charge plus q there is a charge minus q. Now, what is the flux through the closed surface according to Gauss law it is equal to 1 by epsilon naught times the net charge what is the net charge inside the surface net charge is 0. So, the flux through the surface is 0. Let me take one more example. So, one more closed surface is there and say here there is a charge plus q here there is a charge minus 2 q. Now, what is the flux in this situation flux equal to 1 by epsilon naught times the net charge what is the net charge net charge enclosed by the surface outside the surface there are two charges, okay. but what is important for us is how many charges are there inside enclosed charge enclosed by the surface is 0. No? So, here also flux is 0 and one more example see if there is a closed surface like this and there is a charge plus q now the flux enclosed is q by epsilon naught or 1 by epsilon naught into what is the charge inside q say for example, uh, I will take a spherical surface ok. So, this is a spherical closed surface there is a charge plus q ok flux through this surface is q by epsilon naught that is 1 by 4 pi 1 by epsilon naught into q. If I increase the size of the closed surface say the charge encloses plus q now also flux is q by epsilon naught only what does it mean the flux through the surface is independent of the size and it is also independent of the shape of the closed surface. And one more thing is even if you keep this positive charge somewhere here now also flux is same where is the charge inside the closed surface is not important only thing is it should be enclosed by the surface that is it. Now, uh, we know one definition of electric flux what is the definition of electric flux electric flux is the dot product of electric field and area vector. Using this we will give a proof for Gauss law. Say there is a closed surface ok closed surface at the center of this spherical surface. Say there is a charge plus q say this distance is r here let me consider a one very small area magnitude of that area let it be delta a. What is the direction of area vector here area vector is always outward normal area vector is outward normal what does it mean say for example, here there is a box what is the area vector of this surface that is it should be outward and it should be perpendicular. What is the area vector of this surface? This is outward normal. Okay. So, here 
the area vector is outward normal and what is the direction of electric field due to positive charge here that is also away from the positive charge that means angle between E and delta A is 0 what is E dot A basically it is E into A into cos theta. So, in this situation uh, theta is 0 cos 0 is 1. So, therefore, in this small area there can be a small flux what is that small flux delta phi is equal to E dot delta A. We know that uh, cos theta is equal to 0 degree cos 0 is 1. So, therefore, I can write delta phi is equal to E into delta A. If you have to calculate total flux what we will do? We will uh, add the flux through these small areas throughout the sphere. So, what happens summation of delta phi is equal to summation of E into delta A. E is constant everywhere. So, here also E is constant, here also E is constant because electric field just depends on the charge and the distance everywhere on the sur surface distance between any point and the center is r itself. So, therefore, E is constant you can take it outside summation of delta phi will give you total electric flux that is equal to E into summation of delta A. If you add these small small areas throughout the sphere we will get total area of the sphere. What is total area of the sphere? 4 pi r square. Now, what we will do? We will substitute for E. What is the expression for electric field due to a point charge? Electric field point charge is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into Q divided by r square multiplied by 4 pi r square. So, what happened? This 4 pi r square, 4 pi r square cancelled, electric flux is equal to q by epsilon naught. So, instead in Gauss law what he says total electric flux through a closed surface is 1 by epsilon naught times the net charge enclosed. Using Gauss law we could have direct we could have directly written this equation. Na? This is a closed surface inside what is the charge q. So, 1 by epsilon naught into q we could have got the answer directly, but here what we are doing is we, we have given a proof. So, that now one we can trust Gauss law if there is a closed surface, if the charge is inside the closed surface, flux through the closed surface is equal to 1 by epsilon naught times the charge enclosed by the surface. Usually, Gauss law is used to calculate electric field. Okay. Uh, now, the next topic is calculation of electric field due to infinitely long straight wire that we will do it in the next video.